Hello my dear friends and welcome to my channel. Don't forget to make yourself a cup of coffee or tea with snacks if you want, because today we have very interesting stories, and one of them is a story about a woman who called the police on OP because he refused to teach her son. Please subscribe if you haven't and I hope you'll enjoy it. I have an entitled stepmother who my father has been married to for the past 14 years. She's caused a lot of chaos putting my father deep into debt and being verbally abusive to us, but I'll get back to those points in a moment. In December of 2017, my sister was in a major car accident. As I had moved out at this point and I went to bed early the night it had happened, I didn't find out about it until the next morning when I saw the text my father sent me. As my mother abandoned us when I was very young, when I saw the text, my mother instincts kicked in as I had been very protective over my sister because of what we had been though together. My dad was at work so I wasn't getting any information from everyone, but I had assumed the worst in the situation until my sister had called me around noon after she woke up and gave me the details. We lived in a very backwoods area and many of the roads, well paved, are full of many sharp curves. I had talked to her earlier in the day before the accident and she had told me that she was going to her then boyfriend's church to watch a play. On her way there, she had taken a curve too sharp, ended up overcorrecting and going down a hill in her truck. The hill led through a cow pasture, going quickly towards a ravine before slamming the front passenger side into a tree. If she hadn't have been wearing her seatbelt, she would have went through the windshield, if she hadn't have hit the tree, the truck would have flipped when if hit a creek and went down the ravine. She somehow managed to get out of the truck, well very much in shock, and walk all the way up the hill to the last house she passed. She told the older couple that lived there that she was in an accident, and they sat her down and helped her call the appropriate people. They took care of her before my father, aunt, the police, and her boyfriend showed up, and I'm forever grateful that someone was there for her to reach out to. She denied medical care from the ambulance and had to sign a waiver, but she was lucky in the fact she was only scratched up, the worst injury was the back of her hand that has a deep V-shaped scar, which we assume was her hand possibly caught the side of the ashtray, it was an early 90s vehicle during the impact. So, when she finally gets home, she's exhausted, still in shock, and she sits down on the bed, hoping that my aunt would come back over soon with some rubbing alcohol so they can clean up her minor injuries. My stepmom comes into her room and doesn't even ask if she's okay, she just starts tearing into my sister about her crashing the vehicle and how they didn't have money to buy another car for her and how it was going to raise the insurance and on and on and on. Everything becomes a money issue with my stepmother despite her being the one putting my father into debt with her endless shopping sprees. My sister being overwhelmed just got up, said some sort of remark to my stepmother, her memory is fuzzy, but we think it was a screw you of sorts, and ran across the street to my aunt's house to hide. She told me she started crying to our aunt, and my aunt who is a very mild-tempered lady who always tell us to kill people with kindness about wanted to rip my stepmother's head off. My father came over there after a while to retrieve my sister, and my stepmother was fuming, and she almost didn't want to leave. My sister reluctantly went back over to the house, and when my sister told me this part, I almost got in my car to drive up there and tear into my stepmother myself. When she walked back into the door, my stepmother looked at her and said, I demand an apology for what you said to me. My sister, who had just been in a serious accident that could have killed her, is expected to give my stepmother an apology for a fight my stepmother picked. My sister, who was in extreme shock from the events, was being treated as if this was just a little fender bender that's something not to cry about, rather than the accident being as serious as it was. My sister wanted to get my stepmother off her back gave her a half-butted apology, and when that wasn't enough, she was forced to give another one. Days after the accident my stepmother continued to rant and rave about the truck and the insurance and not how my sister was lucky to be alive with us still. My father worked out with my aunt that she would sell him one of her vehicles for my sister to drive, and she's had that one since. Oh, and just to add, when my stepbrother basically totaled his truck hitting a deer a couple of months ago, my stepmother made a scene sobbing and crying, saying he was lucky to be alive, even though the truck took the majority of the impact. She talked his father into spending more money than that truck was worth to get it completely repaired. No wonder he's also entitled like his mother. I wonder what does father have to say about all the crap she's been putting you guys through? I'll never understand how parents can be okay with marrying such awful people to their kids. Shorthand me. Me, my mom. Mom, entitled mom. EM, entitled daughter. ED, my mom's friend that works at Costco's. Steve. This happened a month ago. Alright here is some background. Me and my mom are both essential workers. My mom is a supervisor at a homeless shelter in NYC and I babysit for one of her employees. The baby is 6 months old and therefore is in a high risk population for COVID-19. I am also in a high risk population because I have asthma. 
My family shops at Costco's because we have a five-person household. My mom is a single mom with four kids and buy all of our food wholesale. My mother was a germaphobe years before the pandemic started. So carry around hand sanitizers and Clorox wipes everywhere she goes. So about a month ago me and my mother set out to go to Costco's as we do every week. My mother brings her own Clorox wipes to wipe down the shopping carts because the people wiping down carts at the front door don't change their wipes and they are always visibly dirty. Not faulting Costco's they are doing their best. As soon as we walk in I see a large teddy bear that I saw last week that I really wanted and didn't have the money on me to pick it up. I got paid earlier that day so I had the money for the teddy bear on me, so I picked it up that day. As I was about to put it in the cart my mother told me to hold it because the carts are dirty and my mother only wiped off the baby seat in the cart and the cart handle. So we continue our journey around Costco's and start picking up our items. We got some mushrooms, orange juice, a bunch of fruit and two types of milk because I'm lactose intolerant. At this point the cart is about halfway full and my mother leaves the cart with me outside the freezer section so she can pick up the veggies. I turn around to look for these portable cups of guacamole that Costco's has and when I start to walk back to the cart, I see that a woman has our cart. I start looking around to see if she maybe moved my cart and that was her own, but there were no abandoned carts around. I start staring at her cart and start recounting all the stuff we picked up so far. Then I saw my mother's plastic bag that she left her purse Clorox wipes and Lysol in, so I realized this was my cart. Excuse me um, that not your cart looks at me like I have five heads. That's my car can you please let go of it? Blinks at me and doesn't respond. Ma'am that not your puts her dirty butt leather purse on top of our strawberry and starts to walk away with my cart. At this point I'm freaking pissed. So I run over to the cart and stop the cart with my leg because my hands are full. And use my authoritative voice that I used when children were misbehaving back when I was a camp counselor. Please step away from the cart it is not yours snaps out a daze what are you talking about pushes the cart onto my leg look down this isn't your cart looks startled picks up her purse and walks away sighs and puts down the guacamole and begins to switch out the strawberries em put her purse on enters ed did you just scream at my mother no she tried to take my cart and i told her to stop she said that she is sorry next time don't scream at her like that Steps back from ED I didn't scream at her and I really don't care please leave me alone it's over now. I think it's a good time to note that ED and EM didn't have their mask on. Even though that it was state ordinance to wear masks in public and Costco's policy to wear masks while in store. ED was getting in my face while yelling at me. My mom comes back with all the veggies she picked up and starts unloading them into the cart. While she is unloading the veggies I explain to her what just went down and ask her to wipe down the cart again. She said she was sorry. I don't care and I wasn't talking to you please leave me alone. Don't be rude little girl. Mom. I'm sorry she can have a rude tone sometimes, but she was just telling me what happened so I can wipe down the cart. Do you think we are dirty or something? At this point my mom tells me to ignore her and she wipes down the cart so we can go on with our shopping. A few moments later my mom's friend Steve walks up to us and asks us what ED was talking about. Apparently ED told Steve, a Costco employee that me and my mother were harassing her. We explained what happened and went about our day. ED also gave me a death stare when I was getting my Costco hot dog after we checked out. Wow, some people. Honestly I wouldn't be able to keep my cool I would panic if without a mask she starts getting in my face, she would instantly get an elbow in the face. So, first a little background here first. I'm a 24-year-old dude who's been bouncing around college for around 5 years now, fine job, quit college sort of a deal, but last year I finally steeled my will to at the very least, get BD if not anything else. Anyway, as I've cleared quite a few of courses over the past few years, I can only legally listen to one this year before moving to the final one, which gives me a whole lot of free time. I found a job as a translator, studying English in a country that's starting to get a hang of it, proofreader etc, but even with it I still got quite a lot of free time on my hand, even with the inclusion of my hobbies. So, instead of being a bum, I decided to do something good and listed an ad in the local newspapers that I'd teach kids with disabilities English for free, every week, for a couple of hours. Anyway, I got quite a few responses and things were going generally smoothly. 
I was always upfront about the fact that I do not have any professional background in working with the special kids or the official license, which is also why I recommended the parents sit with me the first time around to see whether I'm a fit for their kid or not. Most parents were very understanding and rather happy as, with all the other expenses that having such a kid entails as state here covers bare minimum, getting a free tutor was heaven sent. Most of them even insisted on some small payments, not a lot, $5 an hour, but in my country that still counts as quite a lot as my monthly net, TV, internet bill is like $25, so I was happy too. Anyway, finally onto the EP story. One day I get a call from a woman saying that she found my ad in the newspapers and that she'd like me to teach her kid. The following conversation unfolds. Alright, that's no problem. If you could just give me your email address, I'll send you a calendar with all my free spots, and you can reply with your desired one. Can you just tell me where you live? Insert a very, very, very suburban area of the city, practically bordering a smaller town. Uh, I'm very sorry, but I won't be able to do it. A. Why? Because I don't work outside the urban area of the city as I can't afford the gas. Huh? If you're gonna put an ad into the newspapers, you should specify that. It's like half an hour drive anyway. What's the big deal? Uh, I'm very sorry, but it's actually a 45 min drive, one and a half hours in both directions. Even if I could afford the gas, I simply wouldn't be able to fit your kid into the schedule as I'd need at the very least four hours for him altogether. That's absurd. What do you mean you can't spare a few hours a week for my kid? Are you saying that just because my kid is disabled he's unworthy of your time? Uh, that's not at all what I'm saying. Look, I know it can be difficult, but I really can't make it. If you'd like, however, we could try and do some Skype lessons and see how the kid responds to them. What? Ugh, whatever, just give me the name of the place where you got your license, because I want to lodge a complaint with you. I'm finally starting to realize things are going badly, very very badly. Oh, I'm not really licensed, but I do have a lot of experience working with kids. I still recommend parents at the first session with us, so they can see how their kid reacts to me. How you're not licensed and you still dare teach special kids yada 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 about how she'll have my butt suit to all hell etc. Anyway, I eventually get tired of her crap and just hang up, figuring that was the end of it. Oh, but it was not. A few days pass, and I've completely forgotten about her, having resumed my standard work as well as tutoring. Then, on a rather chilly Friday, a bell to my house rings and I go to open the door, where two cops welcome me, both angry looking and alert. Long story short, she did call cops on me, not because I didn't have a license, but because apparently I was using the tutoring as an excuse to abuse children, specifically the disabled type, as they were less likely to report me. Despite my denials, they cuff me, store me to jail, where I end up spending a whole night while my mom tries to get a lawyer on the case, as it's not exactly a standard practice here to have one on hand. She also proceeds to inform the parents whose kids I was supposed to tutor the day after, Saturday, that I couldn't make it, and tells them the whole ordeal. Literally a few hours after the Saturday's dawn, the police commissioner, or whatever, someone more important than your average cop, comes and personally escorts me out, apologizing profusely on behalf of the police force and promising to reimburse me as quickly as possible. He also gives me the woman's personal information in case I wish to sue for libel and whatever else, he said I could stack up quite a few charges. Turns out the kid's parents banded together and quite literally besieged the police's phone lines as well as their offices, clamoring about how I was wrongfully arrested. Anyway, I never pressed charges against the woman, mainly because of the kid, who indeed had DS, but I did decide to eventually get the license, as soon as I get my BD that is. Though it's not required by law here, as I'm still allowed to teach and tutor with parents' consent, I figured it won't hurt. Luckily, as the whole thing was over within around 13 or 14 hours, the press never got a hold of it, and the woman for some reason never went to it, so I haven't gotten any backlash because of it. Because I know there'll be some questions about the jail, no, it wasn't that horrid, actually. I was locked up with a couple of random addicts who were too stoned out of their minds to even notice I was there, and I took a neat nap on what I just assumed was a pretty clean bench, you won't change my mind, and I was out by 10am the next day. It helped my street cred though, also impressed the kids cause now I wasn't just a nice English tutor, but also a street certified cool dude. 
This is a nice story and you are already being nice by spending your free time helping these kids, and she doesn't even appreciate that. Some entitled parents is the spawns of Satan themselves. Hope you're okay and everything is good after that. I was coming home for the holidays, and it was quite a long drive, 6 hours. That in combination that I normally work nights made me a bit fuzzy around the edges, brain being on power save mode and such. Anyway mom is cooking something and forgot something at the store and needed me to get two cans of asparagus. So off I go to the store. There is a new Walmart near my house, and apparently the timing is just right as I easily am able to get into the store and find the two cans of asparagus needed. I'm standing in line kinda out of it because of lack of sleep, abrupt change in schedule, and long boring drive home. This was before the oil boom turned I-20 into some sort of Mad Max reenactment zone. The couple in front of me is checking out as she has a cart loaded full up and the kid is starting to lose his mind, I step a half step back, so give them a bit of room to unload her cart and deal with the kid. I'm clearly in line just not right on top of the next person like some people tend to stand. Anyway I notice that someone is trying to edge in from the side for some reason. It's kinda awkward what they are trying to do with a full shopping cart, so I step a little closer and pay it no more mind. Well this lady doesn't give up, she tries one side then another kinda trying to force the way open, but at 6'5 and 300 pounds I'm not going anywhere if I don't feel like it. Of course, I'm still in power save mode, so I don't immediately notice this. The couple in front of me finally clear up enough of their groceries that some of the belt is available, and so I put my two cans of asparagus on the belt with a thunk. Suddenly, Karen explosion. I miss some of the explosion as it takes a second or two for my brain to boot back up, how dare you cut in front of me. There is a special place in hell just for people like you. At this point I am very confused and still a little out of it, which is probably a blessing cause had I been together, my mouth would have certainly got me in trouble. I just look at her. I dunno if my I have no idea what this crazy lady is going on about looked at it, or perhaps, it was the fact that everyone in 100 yards were now giving her that same look. Or maybe it was the fact that her little urchin was yanking on her sleeve saying, Mommy, Mommy, Mommy he was here before us, how did you miss him he has a bright blue shirt. He wasn't cutting Mommy. Anyway with a contemptuous snort, she abandoned her full cart and just walked out of Walmart kid in tow. I paid for the damned asparagus and went home. Imagine being such an entitled person that you just don't get groceries because a man wouldn't let you cut in line. Somehow the logic is astounding. Well guys, that's it for today. If you end up enjoying this video please consider subscribing, and if you missed the last episode on the channel I'm gonna link it right here, the story is about a woman who became mad because a cashier refused to sell knife and lighters to her son. Check this out if you haven't, and I'll see you in my next video.